Holy shit, guys, you're never gonna believe it. Yeah, what? Shit, how concerned do I have to be? How many knives do I need to get? Stand down, soldier. Don't mind him. He's been fanboying for the last hour. Oh, okay. So what's up? Okay, okay, so, so Janine and I, we were at the bookstore, right? Because one of my favorite authors just dropped a new book, and then we ran into her while she was signing stock, and here she is! Hi guys, my name is Mary Janice Davidson, uh, except when I'm at a fantasy conference with my daughter, then my name is C. Emelongi's mother. I'm over 40, so I don't really get TikTok, but Christina has very kindly offered to help me promote my new book, Road Queens. Aren't you the one who writes those hilarious romance novels about paranormies like us? Yes, she got several things wrong. It's very amusing. Yeah, that's, um... Anyway, I'm, I'm mostly known for my Betsy the Vampire Queen series, but I also love writing contemporary romances. And she's got a new one out called Road Queens about an all-woman biker gang? Oh, those guys are either your best friends or they'll put you in the hospital with four broken ribs and a chipped tooth for a single bad pun. Sometimes both. Yeah, wh what is going on? Never mind. Road Queens is about three women who form a sisterhood to help rescue survivors of domestic violence. Wait, is this like one of those mafia romance novels that puts hardened criminals and fluffy hurt comfort stories and is completely unrealistic? I think anything that instigates conversation and action against such a taboo subject is worthwhile, no matter the plot. Yeah, reality has no place in the romance genre anyway, okay? Chris, what are you doing? Why do you keep changing voices and outfits and ears? I... Okay, well, to continue, uh, I am giving away 50% of my royalties to charities set up to help survivors of domestic violence. There, see? Quit being a book snob. I will do no such thing. My snobbery shall know no bounds. Where's Rethu? They were right here a second ago. I believe I saw them fly away when we came in. What? They're in the middle of a shift. Hey, sorry, I had to make a quick flight. You're Mary Janice? Yes. Who the hell are you? What the hell are you doing? Great. I need you to sign all of these. Oh, I know it's you, Chris. They're all you. A2, Rethu. I don't discriminate on genre. It's all good. So I guess only the asshole dragons hoard gold, huh? Or the tacky ones. I am a dragon of taste and practicality. Books, dice, Magic the Gathering cards. You've read all of the- you wrote all of these? Yeah, I, um, I, uh, I read them and I wrote them. Just not in that order, or maybe simultaneously? Anyway, I love writing, and um, and I'm so proud that my daughter is a is a published author. I'm so proud of you, Chris. That uh, the one who's my daughter. That I mean, obviously, you're all my daughter. No, no, there's only one of you, and the one of you that really exists is my daughter. <laughs> I've read some of them. Okay, buying books and reading them are two completely different hobbies. You know, ebooks are a thing, right? Mm. Wait, hold on. If you if you're an ebook reader, didn't you say that you went to a bookstore to buy the physical version of her book? <sighs> he needed a shelf trophy. A what? Shelf, shelf trophy. trophy. When you finish consuming the digital book and you really, really like it, then you buy the physical book so you can put it on your shelf. And have the author sign it since they can't sign digital products. <sighs> That makes very little sense. You're buying two versions of the same thing. That is exactly what I told him. Shelf trophy, that, shelf trophy, that's great. Actually, I, I have never heard that. Well, I'm off, I'm off track. Okay, um, as I was saying hours and hours earlier, I am donating half of my Road Queen royalties to domestic violence shelters. But here's the best part. If you're a member of Kindle Unlimited, you can get the Kindle version for free and the audiobook for free. And those count toward royalties. So you pay nothing. You get a great book or audiobook and you're helping survivors. And if you don't care for romance, pass it on to your friends and family because uh, like Janine said, I think anything that gets people talking about a taboo topic is worth what Chris, Chris said that not Chris, my daughter said the one, the only one who is my daughter is the one who said that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I really want to blow the, the shelters away with our donation. It'd be great if you guys could help me. And I think that's it. I, um, 
I pray to God that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention to whatever the hell this was. And um, thanks again. Who is she talking to? Who am I talking to? I don't know. All I heard is that the ebook is free and still helped with the DV shelters. All that I actually had to buy was the shelf trophy. All right. Sign these, please. You cannot be willy-nilly about this. There has to be rules, structure, order. Absolutely not. You can't control this. There are too many factors. Well, I don't think you have to be that rigid about it, but there should be some sort of consistency. Oh, hey, sis. I'm here to pick up those ghost pepper cookies for the fundraiser. Ghost what? Oh, yeah, you should definitely try one of those. Here, boss is calling it her own donation, so you don't have to pay. Thank you. I know I shouldn't ask, but what are you three arguing about? Books. Specifically what qualifies as a five-star read. And these two heathens keep insisting that it's pure vibes. Oh, because some of us only read for the vibes, all right? I'm a military officer. I have to think and brain all day. So when I'm relaxing, I want to be able to turn my brain off. This also means that I'm not going to think particularly hard about what exactly makes this book a five-star read or why that one's only a two-star read. I don't have a fucking checklist. Okay, but what you've suggested as five stars has no consistency outside of genre. Not even even in tropes or quality. I mean, you've got Pride and Prejudice, Akatar, Colleen Hoover, Mary Janice Davidson, and Twilight. Okay, Twilight is a special case. It is a two-star read for multiple reasons, but it's five stars for nostalgia and bitching about it. That makes no sense. Look, five stars is like, it's like an exclusive club, okay? It's VIP, all right? Only a few, very few special books get to be considered five stars. What you just said, is gibberish. Well, it makes perfect sense if you don't think about it. You have like a literal chart where you give or take away points on characters, world, prose, and a dozen other things that I can't even keep track of. Theme, diversity representation, realism versus escapism, setting. I said setting. No, you said world. World building and setting are two totally different things. He's right. He's overthinking it but he's right. Also, there are different checklists for different genres. You can't really compare a fantasy book to a historical fiction or realistic fiction book or a biography, all right? A contemporary or historical novel doesn't need to use world building, but instead needs to consider accuracy and realism. Yeah! Okay, I'm going to take these cookies and go fight cancer. Good luck. Later, sis. Also, there's time to consider. What happens when the first read-through is five stars, but you reread it later and it's not as good? Or the opposite, you reread someone and now believe that it's better than you thought the first time. You run it through the checklist again and adjust the rating accordingly. I'm not a complete stickler. People change, I get that. Just, just read what you want to read and enjoy the vibes. Why must you brain? Hi, Miss Nicole. Can I ask you for something? Just a second. Okay. What is it? How much do you charge for a good luck charm? Well, it depends on how much power you need put into it. The more powerful charms require more powerful and therefore rarer and more expensive ingredients. Well, I just need something to pass my driver's test. My parents also mentioned they'd like something to put in the car so we don't get into an accident. Winter's finally starting to properly winter, so... Well, that should be easy. But you know Bob's way more powerful than me, right? She can probably do something like that in lieu of a week's worth of tips or something. Well, yeah, but I don't want to be a bother with something so little. I'm already the group kid. They're all fighting dragon egg stealing witches and monster ghost hordes. I mean, obviously you help with that too, but JC also said that you were a teacher, and also you're a bit less scary than everyone else. You think they're scary? You don't? I think the only one who doesn't scare me is Husnia. And even only sometimes, she can get really vicious to mean customers. Well, yeah, but you're not a mean customer. The worst thing they would do if you asked for help with this is say no. Well, I guess. My parents said the same thing, but I still feel better going to you with this. Okay. A protective luck charm for your car specifically would typically cost about $40. I'll give you a student discount and put it at $30. i will have it for you tomorrow. Yes! Thank you. But that does not mean you can shirk practice and study. Luck will only take you so far. Yes, ma'am. Mom's been having me do a lot of the driving when she needs to drop me off at school or work or for running errands. Good. You and JC, you're both so weird about asking for magical help. 
Oof. We've got a hell of a blizzard coming at us. Do you think Miss Bob will give us the day off? Well, maybe, if it stays this... inactive. Hey, babe. You're early. Hi. We closed the school early to give the buses time to get everyone home safely. Drek, I have your charm. Keep it anywhere in your car. Good timing, too. We've got a blizzard coming. Yes! And here is your 30. Charm? Yeah, my parents were worried about me starting to drive in January, and also I was worried about passing the test this week. I've been practicing every day, but this helps. I'll bet. Babe, as much as I would love for you to stay, I think you should get going. The snow's gonna start coming down and people always forget how to drive in winter. I know, that's why I'm staying. The bus schedules are probably going to get delayed and I don't like the idea of you being on one of them. They don't even have seatbelts. I'll drive you home. You want a good luck charm for that? I hear they're very effective. I already have one of those. Oh, you replaced the one you gave to Hurla? Oh, that makes me feel much better. Yeah, okay. All right, everyone, we are closing early. I don't want any of you caught up in this oncoming blizzard. Yes! I mean, oh no. Start cleaning. Drek, I want you to call your parents, have them pick you up. That's not necessary. JC and I will take them. Really? Well, yeah, might as well. Save them a trip. Excellent. I appreciate that, Nicole. I'll start on the back. Also, if you guys want, I can get rid of the snow on your cars. Without burning it, please. Obviously, I'm not an amateur. Hi, could I please get a chocolate chip cookie and a siren song tea? Also, what's your Wi-Fi password? Your total is on the screen and I would not get comfortable. We're going to be closing soon. The sign says you're open until four. Ordinarily, yes, but we have a blizzard coming at us and I want all of my employees to get home safe. Wow, people will latch onto any excuse to get out of work. I don't know, not wanting to die or get run off the road is a pretty good one. How long have you lived in the Midwest? My whole life? So you know how dangerous these storms can be. Just drive slowly, you'll be fine. I would rather eliminate the risk entirely. And as owner and manager, I have that right. Just cause you can do something doesn't mean you should. You're gonna run out of business if you keep doing this. Disagree. Part of the reason that I'm a regular customer here is because of the ethical practices. And I would much rather my partner get home safe than risk them getting a crash for a few more tips. Well, if it's such a concern, then maybe you should get a better job, hmm? One that allows you to work from home? Or I could just treat my employees with respect and dignity. Yeah, if she followed your advice, I'd have put in my two week notice ages ago. Honestly, same. Here is your cookie and your drink, ma'am. Ugh, well at least you're efficient. Mm. I opened this cafe in the 1960s, and that may be the first time I've had a customer complain about us closing for a blizzard. It's the age of the Karen, a terrifying time to be alive. Isn't Drek supposed to be here by now? Yeah, I've got dishes piling up. His mother just called. Apparently he has a driving test that was scheduled for right after school today, so he is going to be late. Driving test? I didn't know he was prepping for one of those. I wouldn't worry about it. He got a charm from Nicole so he doesn't slide on any ice. Glad I am that Nicole is getting work with her witchcraft. He does know that my luck spells are more powerful, right? Are we getting jealous? No, not at all. Simply confused. Bob, you're the boy's boss. That makes you rather intimidating. Ah. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Whoa, that is a tall dish pile. You know, if I get a few more forks, I think I can turn it into a miniature Empire State Building. How was your driving test? Huh? Oh, nothing major. I passed. Yay! Awesome. Now you can give me a ride, save me the time I waste on the bus. You don't have a license? Never needed one. I mean, I've never been able to afford a car and I won't until like at least a year from now. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to save up for a car or save up for a house so I can stop renting. Of course, my credit score is kind of in the toilet. Oh yeah, my parents had similar problems when I was a baby. Still kind of do. No issues from the weather. There's still a fair bit of snow on the ground from the last blizzard. Nah. The instructor though. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna pass, kid. Uh, what? You can't even reach the gas and brake pedals. No offense, but this is why Goblin shouldn't drive. Why are you even taking this test? <clears throat> well, sir, this car is specifically designed for subterraneans. I don't use the pedals. We use the buttons, dials, and levers that are all up here. I mean, like these. I think the designer based it off of cars for disabled big people. Like, you know, those who use wheelchairs. Hmm. 
Doesn't help if you can't see, though. You people are as blind as bats. Well, goblins can see in the dark, which is why most of us wear sunglasses even inside. The light sensitivity is bad. Well, mine is a lot better. I usually only need it outside, even when it's cloudy, because I'm only half goblin. Uh-huh. Well, let's see how long it takes you to drive us into a ditch. <clears throat> so where are we driving? Oh, I am so sorry you had to deal with that, sweetheart. That sounds deeply unpleasant. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. He could not say a single bad thing about me because my driving was perfect. I have never done it better. Parallel parking, one-way streets, everything. He had to give me that license after saying all that crap. <laughs> well done. You didn't happen to get his full name, did you? You want to curse him? As much as I would like to think that his experience with you has turned him for the better, I believe he may need a more of a nudge in the right direction before he repeats the behavior. I have an entire notebook of people who have volunteered for their memories to be given to bigots in their dreams, so they experience that hatred firsthand. Works wonders. Well, my mom snagged his business card so she could make the complaint. Excellent.